Hey YouTube, Phil and Florence. Today I got a special cook for you. I'm gonna be doing a reverse sear ribeye steak on my new red Weber kettle, limited edition. I do have the slow and sear in the dripping griddle. I'll be using that. I haven't acquired the, the easy spin grate yet. I have plans to. So I'll just have to do the best I can with what I got. Too bad David Parrish isn't around with one of those easy spins. I might could put it to use. So that's what we got in store. So you stay tuned and stick with me and I'll see what I can do with this reverse sear ribeye on the Weber kettle. Two pound plus steaks, ribeyes, salted, vacuum sealed, going in the fridge overnight. Tomorrow we'll do reverse. Okay, here are the two ribeyes that we're gonna be doing. Maybe a little over a pound a piece, probably a pound and a quarter or something like that. Came from Sam's Angus beef. I see some marbling down in there, so it should turn out just fine. All right, here's my setup. I'm gonna use the slow and sear, dripping griddle, and the Weber kettle. And we're gonna use, light about 25 charcoal, put them in the corner there, let the grill get up to temp, and put our steaks on. Okay, we're gonna let these cook, offset to 80 degrees, open up, turn them over, and let them go some more till, till they get to 115. We'll probe them with the thermopop at that time and take them up and get ready. Pour in another chimney of charcoal and get it hot. Take these in, pat them off, and pepper them down and come back. Okay, we've reached 80 degrees, and according to David, I'm supposed to... All right, he said this is absolutely necessary, but just to make sure it cooks. All right, I'm gonna stick that back in, and go to 115 for medium rare. If you want it done more than medium rare, you would go to maybe 120 or so. I'm gonna turn my summer work smoke and set that for 115. Okay, I got my rib eyes on. They're coming up to the 115 mark where I'll take them off and prepare them for the sear. And if I had an easy spin grate, where's David Parrish when you need him? I need an easy spin grate. What? Uh-oh. <laughs> Look at well, there. Well, Mr. Rogers, we got a uh, ABC customer service hotline request, and I just happened to be in your neighborhood with an easy spin grate, so uh, I thought I would stop by and help you out. Wow, David. That is so cool. Fooled ya. <laughs> <laughs> we had talked earlier, and last time I did a ribeye steak reverse sear, David was watching and I know he was just going, mm, 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 I could show that boy something. So he's here to do some hands-on and show me. I'm kind of stubborn, I'm old school. So seeing is believing. I've watched the video before, but you know, 
it's hard to start doing something a different way until you actually do it yourself. So that's what he's going to show me. So what's next, David? You, sir, are going to be a believer. So uh, what's next is we've got the steaks at uh, 115 degrees. So they're ready to be seared. Uh, we have to prep them before uh, we can do that, though. So we're going to pat them dry with paper towels. We're going to coat them with uh, olive oil and uh, black pepper. And then we're going to throw them on the grate on the hot fire and uh, go to town. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. One thing to remember with uh, with searing is that you have to burn the water off before you actually sear the meat. Water boils at 212 degrees. The Maillard reaction that creates searing occurs over 300. So the water has to boil off. It, it takes a whole lot of energy mm -hmm. to get water to steam. So right. every little bit of water that we take off here mm -hmm. is just going to speed up that process. And the faster we sear the steak, the more wall-to-wall -wall red we're going to have. So I'm not going to use that napkin over because I'm trying okay. to get these things as dry as possible. So I'm going to use. And you know, the average backyard grill weekend guy does not know that uh, science. You know that about water and yeah, they just heat up the grill and throw them on. You know that's yeah. what we've all done. So. I'm really interested in this, and uh, I'm, I'm eager to, to do it again and repeat this myself. So these are as dry as we're going to get them. There's no right. reason to squeeze the paper towel. Right. Like squeeze this, you're not going to squeeze juice out. The only thing you have to do is, uh, is just pat them dry. All right, we're just get some oil in here. And that's something I can't believe we're doing, and we're going to be putting these <laughs> over a hot bed of coals. This is you, olive oil, right? You, yeah. You're, <laughs> you're right. like low flashpoint. What are you thinking? Well, okay. what I'm thinking is olive oil, the flashpoint or the temperature at which it burns is around 300 degrees, a little over 300. Right. That's also the temperature where the Maillard reaction occurs. The oil is going to boil mm -hmm. as the steak is going through the Maillard reaction. And that's just going to help. That's just going to help. The other thing is we're putting the we're putting the pepper on now instead of later because since we're using the cold grate technique, this pepper is not going to burn. Pepper burns when it touches a hot grate, not when it feels the heat from the fire. So we don't have a hot okay. grate, so we don't have to worry about that. That cold grate idea is amazing. Nobody ever thought of that. How, how, what made you think of that anyway? How did you get to this place? You know, I was having a conversation with uh, Meathead from Amazing Ribs uh, mm -hmm. over email uh, a few years ago. And uh, we were talking about cast iron grates at the time. Right. And uh, he said, you know, if I had my druthers, mm -hmm. I think that's the word he used, druthers, Probably. he would levitate the steak over the fire. I'm like, okay. How am I going to levitate a steak over a oh, fire? Oh, that got you. So, you know, there, there are different things out there that people have tried. One is uh, skewers. And uh, I forget the other one off the top of my head. But we tried a couple of different things. And, uh, oh, yeah, basket. We tried a basket. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem with those is that, you know, the skewer you're putting inside the meat, and it's not really safe to do that for something you're going to cook to medium rare. Uh, and the other thing is uh, the baskets eventually heat up. Right. By using the cold grate technique, the the grate doesn't uh, doesn't it doesn't sear the meat. So instead, you need a very very hot fire. And with the slow and sear, we're able to do that. Other right. the, the slow and sear gives you the heat to do it. Mm -hmm. There are very few grills out there uh, that have. That, that reach those kind of temperatures. And we're gonna we're gonna demo that now. These are these are ready, so let's go see her. Okay. So we'll wait till the last second, put the grate on, because we want the grate to be cold. Mm -hmm. Slide the grate on. And uh, we're gonna have even give it a ro rotate before we put the steaks on because we want it as cool as we can get it. Alright. Steak is going on. Start. Steak right. is going on. Yeah. So it's time. Okay. I'll be your timer. You won't have to worry about your watch this time. You hear it? Yeah. Isn't it amazing how quickly the steering starts? Yes, it is. Yeah. And that grate's cold. The grate's not doing it. It's the flames. It's the fires. The radiant right. heat. That was a hot... What we did is uh, after I 
poured the chimney of uh, charcoal in, we've got the blower and blew the coals and got them maximized. And they are maximized. Now this thing here has a good bit of fat in the center of it, so yep. you may get a little more action on that side with that fat. And you know, that that's one thing to point out, is because the grate's cold, the fat is not burning on the steak, it's burning on the charcoal and under, mm -hmm. underneath, so the steak is not burning. All right, we're at a minute, and we're gonna rotate. Okay. So rotate, and we'll put, uh, we'll put this steak here. Side. Take here on that side. All right, start. All right, and that's you can. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, looking at them, you can see they are already getting nice and brown. I mean, you can, yeah, eat, you can yeah. eat that like that, but we're going to get a little more brown. Camera, what this steak looks like. That's beautiful. And look, look at the oil. I see it. So we're getting, we're getting what we want. We're getting that, we're getting that searing action. All right, one more minute on this side. All right. And at this point, they've been searing for just over two minutes. So I would, yes, exactly. I would recommend let's hit it with a thermopop. Both sides are seared, so if they're done, we can eat them. But if they're not, we'll keep going. All right, we're at 117 on that 18. And what I find is when you cook them this way, is they do tend to rest up quite a bit. So, well, we had them off, you know, a good while messing with them. So, true. Getting them prepared. So, the temperature, we took them off to start with at 115. So, you know, the temperature in the meat came back down. So. Yeah, those dang videos, you know, <laughs> having to set the camera and all that right. slows it down. But yeah. what actually, what this is going to let us do is show the crack lid method. Mm -hmm. have, have you heard of that before? No. So I'm going to show you that once we do this final clip, if they're not done. The, the Our sear marks aren't that color. The whole steak's that color. Yeah, right. That's going to be flavor. I I'm, I'm, uh, can't yeah. wait to see what Janet thinks. So that's four minutes, right? So let's take a look at these. we got a nice sear on that side. And nice sear on that side. And that's... the. This is the hot side, so I'm going to go ahead and flip them again. Okay. We're going to leave them over here. You got your um, thermopop again. Yep. Let's check this. One twenty-one. So this is going to rest up into low, medium, rare by the time okay. we eat it. So if that's where you want it, that's where. Yeah, we're... medium rare is good. Okay. And this one is, oh, this one's also going to be good. Let me demo the crack lid method okay. just for a second anyway. Right. So let's pretend these steaks weren't ready. What okay. we would do is we would take our lid and situate it so that the slow and sear is exposed on this side. Mm -hmm. A lot of the heat is going out over there. Right. And then... Uh, so you need less heat now. So, so you'll have less heat on the indirect side. I hope that's showing up on camera. And this will allow you to slowly warm your steaks. That'll allow you to slowly warm your steaks. Right. If they're not, if, when you're done searing, if they're not quite ready. Okay. But, these, but these are done, so we're going to take them yeah. off. All right, it's time for a taste test. We're going to put this uh, easy spin grate to the test. Reverse sear. I want to cut through the middle. Let's cut yeah. through the middle. Yep, right there. That's good. And let's just see what we got. Ooh, oh, yeah. Birdie. Beautiful. Yep. Mm -hmm. The yeah, oh yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's actually more medium rare than it looks right now because right. of the uh, the cloudy lighting. But try yeah. this, honey. Mmm, yeah. <laughs> mmm. Good. You think work? Oh yeah, love the outside taste. Mmm. Let me give this one to David. And let him try it. I want to know is that good? Is Justin? It baby back maniac. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good answer. I think we did all right. Mm -hmm. That's a good answer. All mm -hmm. right, I'm gonna try a little piece here. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Wonderful flavor. Great flavor. Yep. You know what, guys? There's not but one thing left to do to this. Yeah. And that's to take these inside and devour. Right. What do you think? I think let's go eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. let's go eat. Let's do it. All right.
Thank you so much for coming along and joining us on this cook. I had a surprise for you, didn't I? <laughs> we beamed him in. That's right. He's got that technology that uh, they had on Star Wars. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the new ABC customer service for uh, 2018. It's in beta. Not sure we're going to be able to roll it out for the entire U.S., but uh, it worked okay today. Yep. <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming, David. I you appreciate know. you having me. I had a blast. That was yeah, fun. That was thanks great. for coming. So until next time, this is Phil and Florence along with David Parrish from Adrenaline Barbecue. And Janet and Florence. <laughs>